So howdy. Um, this is going to be a build video on how to assemble my rotator. And this is a completed rotator, but I have to take it apart. Because I on the bottom one is a, my final design. The top one was my work in progress as I was going along. Uh, the, the work in progress one is has a couple differences. On the, uh, this one up here, I use a plas uh, printed shaft for this one part here that supports uh, the, the camera bracket that I made and I changed that to a design that uses uh, a steel shaft that I th thread in a bolt and then JB weld everything in place. I also put some pockets in the side for some quarter inch rod and I JB weld, you can see those in the bottom, the black dots so that I can um, so it provides extra stiffness. I don't know if they're needed or not, but I figured what the heck. Um, this is the one that's going to go into here. The other change is a printed shaft for the motor. And on this version down here, I have an aluminum shaft, which I have right here, um, which is just an aluminum spacer I picked up from aluminumspacers.com. And what I do is uh, put a M3, three M3 holes in here thread them in place to a height where they slip onto the motors and then JB weld those in place. So that'll be going on. Uh, these are 32.5 millimeters which is the longest size they have in their 8 millimeter stock. Uh, you could probably use, they have uh, 5 sixteenths and that would probably work as well and you can get longer pieces from them um, or you could use printed ones like I have. I just wanted the security of having metal and uh, yeah Right now the motor just sets in place with friction. I will probably design a clamp that clamps onto here, but I haven't got around to designing it yet. So in order to get this going, I have to take this apart. So everything is put, all the surface screws are M3. That's the wrong size. I'm going to take the camera L bracket off first. And there's captured nuts inside of this disc in the back to secure this so it's not just screwed into plastic. And and this is all printed in ABS. One thing I, I learned is that ABS does not like Loctite it will crumble if you use Loctite. Uh, so instead if you're going to use any type of thread lock material, nah, I still got a little bit left on that. I may wait and I'll show you what I use. Oh, it should be out. This one's still not out. There we go. So that's off. Um, so like I said, if you're going to use any type of thread lock material, I found oh this VC and drop on the floor. VC3 uh, thread mate, and that won't mess with the ABS. So we take the base off and pull the motor out. So the motor is just hold in with friction, which is nice. And you just use the standard NEMA 17 motors. And if there's a note, I'm sorry, I have a print going. Uh, that's a different size. In the background, sorry about the noise. Hopefully it's not too loud. Like I said, this was my work in progress one, but it works, so I'm not going to reprint it. I am going to make a longer one of these so I can turn, so I can rotate uh, on the nodal of the lens. And that's something I got to get to. A little bit more. Okay. So I'm going to move this away because I'm not working on this one. Okay, so I'm going to take this apart. 
and I said originally I had design extra posts down here my new one that got rid of these two and has an additional third one up here uh, and I'll put the, the length for all the uh, bolts uh, when I upload it when I finish my final version for Thingiverse so for now it's yeah, I custom cut these bolts because I just buy longer ones rather than stock a whole bunch of different sizes and just cut them if you're gonna do that cutting them uh, you have a threader um, Usually I thread that on first to the bolt, cut it with a Dremel tool, cut off wheel, and then chamfer the uh, outside of it, not chamfer, um, fillet the outside, and then run the thread tool up, and then I'm good to go. So in order to get this disc out, I need to take, it's only, it's held on by the uh, 90 tooth wheel here and that's held on by two Allen screws at 180 degrees from each other. So I need to remove those. Let's see if, I don't know, I got the right one. Oh. That's it. And I can't get in there with the, uh, with the wrenches on there for them. Or with the, with the dri nut driver. That should be out. In order to get this disc out, because it's kind of tight, I can get two Allen wrenches in both sides and work it up. And this one here, they're 180 degrees, it's a little easier. The other one, you have to come up like this. But. And just like that. And I didn't secure the So this is just like this one over here. Uh, there's a slightly different design of it. Uh, that has captured nuts on the back, but like I said, uses a printed shaft. And I just didn't want to trust this holding my camera. Um, there's a recess in the back of this for this 70 millimeter wide thrust bearing that fits on the back. And if printed correctly, it should just be a tiny bit taller than that. It, it's just a fraction of a millimeter. That's all I need. And then that provi provides uh, you know, uh, stress relief so that it's not just relying on the two uh, 608 bearings I have. And right now I'm using an 8 millimeter shaft. And I might work up another version that uses a 10 millimeter. We'll see how this all works when I have it running. And thing that I couldn't find locally when I figured out that uh, what I was going to do, I couldn't find nine, uh, eight millimeter uh, round stock. So I'm using 516 steel, which Home Depot stocked. And the place I got these from has 5 16 and I might try using some of those because I can't find 8 millimeter threaded um, spacers that I need uh, without special ordering them probably for more money than I want to spend but they do have their 5 uh, 16 with an uh, with an M4 hole which I should then be able to uh, I shouldn't even have to drill I should just go ahead and tap that because it'll be 4.2 millimeters on the inside, which is perfect for tapping for an M5 bolt. So, like I said, I'm gonna put this aside. Uh, right, this is just pressed in place right now. It fits flush when it's all set and done. And uh, underneath that, there's a uh, M3 bolt that I was going to leave in here to, in order to stiffen it up. And I accidentally drilled it out too thick. I was gonna JV. And, and before I decided to, to change the design entirely. So let me take this all apart here. 
All the nuts are captured in the back. I should just be able to unscrew this. And I'll put the belt sizes that I'm using um, on Thingiverse as well once I'm all said and done. I have two different gearings. And they require different belts. And technically, if you want to print your own gears up with an 8mm opening, you can make any gearing you want. And they provide an idler slot. So if you want to put an idler in, but uh, I kind of guessed on the belt lengths. So this one doesn't have an idler, the other one does. I'd rather have an idler in place because it provides some, uh, it, it keeps more teeth in the, uh, in the belt. Here's the 90 tooth uh, sprocket that I'm using, eight millimeter wide. Uh, this is a thing of verse design that I used. So, those are the nuts falling out of the back. Two, three. So I changed the nut design to use the nylock ones so that the, on my final version the, the holes are, are deeper on the back. These, won't, these ones won't take nylock. Or they would, but they would be sticking out if they were confused. One more. Okay. So these are shorter than these because they're recessed to fit underneath that disc and they have to be down below the level of the disc so they don't hit. So these are shorter. And another design I might toss up is instead of using printed separator posts, I might toss a design up sooner or later that uses aluminum spacers. This is cheaper and seems very strong, but if I did that, I would remove these nut pockets and instead put recessed holes. So it would be an easy design and I could toss that up as an option. But for now, uh, I'm not doing that. So, pop this off. Okay, and here you can see the back side of the plate. It's got two 608 bearings, and the drive shaft sits in one of them, and this sits in the other. And it's very tight, so I'm not going to press it back in, but you get the idea. So I'm going to leave this half just the way it is, with these in place, and I'm going to take this one apart because I'm going to put this gear, and this is a 22 tooth. Uh, I believe it's either 22 or 25. I can't remember off the top of my head. But like I said, any gearing you want, you can go to Thingiverse, and I'm, I'm going to link to the uh, the thing that allows you to create these. The other version, like I said, has an idler. When I built this version, this back plate is just this front plate reversed, and I removed some features. When I did that, I forgot to reverse the side. <laughs> on the idler slot so I drilled a hole in this one to provide a slot for it but I didn't end up using it so it's just there okay so this is the old drive shaft and I, I 3d printing an 8 millimeter shaft a 5 millimeter hole that would work on a D shaped motor which is what's required was complicated because it uh, it's very small and the parts have to be very detailed. So, in my mind, it's easier to use this, which is easier, stronger, and, and no matter how tight you tighten these belts down, it won't bend. I, I broke a couple of these because they flex. 
and I can flex this one of my fingers. So like I said it was complicated. Um, if I had gone with, I was thinking about going with a 10 millimeter shaft for this, and I actually have bearings for 10 millimeter coming in, but they're still coming from China. So in the meantime, I decided to get these instead. So now I have this. I need to drill three uh, holes for an M3 tap. One in the middle and one a little ways away on each side. And I'm not using this in my drill press in my garage where the lighting is awful. So you're just going to take my word for it when I come back and these are drilled that I did that. The other thing I need to do is cut the steel shaft to replace this shaft to go into here. And in order to drill a hole directly in the center is hard. Yeah, there's, the way I do it is I drill a hole in the block of wood that is 5 sixteenths in size. I put my new spacer in that hole without moving anything else in the drill press. Put the drill bit for the uh, M5 threaded hole, which is 4.2 millimeters down the center. And that allows me to keep it in the center. Uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of a pain if you don't have a drill press, press it's impossible. That's why I'm looking for spacers that will do that same task. Um, if I can find those, I will link to them when I do find them. Like I said, I might just go with 15 sixteenths or 5 sixteenths spacers here for the same company I got these from with the M4 hole and tap those. Um, that should work. And I have three people who want one of these from me, so I will have an opportunity to test that out. Um, and the place was really quick on ordering them. I ordered them on a Monday. They were here on a Wednesday. They were very, very quick. Made in the USA. Um, very, I think it's a small shop, it seemed. But they were very responsive and got things to me quickly. Um, now, the, I got the belts and a link to where I got them from in the Thingiverse. And unfortunately, without looking it, it up, I can't tell what's, how many teeth are on this. Uh, because their markings aren't for the size of the belt or the number of teeth so I have no idea what these markings are actually for this is a uh, 14 uh, 14 30 60 of their GT2 six millimeter wide belts the other one uses which does have an idler and uses a 30 tooth drive is a uh, 161060. I said I'll link to both of these and I'll have links to both of the gears I'm using. Um, I'll have these parts as part of the Thingiverse project. So, first thing I need to do is I have some aluminum somewhere. Once I can find it, I'll have to use this really long piece. You want your holes to be in a line on here, or as close to a line as you can get it. And I'm using a chisel, which I'll have to resharpen, because I've been using it for this, to score a line down the side here, so that I can keep them in. And all I do is run it down the side of this V-slot. And now I have a score mark I can follow with my drill press. So, now I want to mark a hole for the center. Move this out of the way. Now, uh, where's my calipers? Here they are. So each one of these shafts is 32.5, and I get 32.49. If I go all the way across, yeah, 32.49. So that means I need to be 16 and a quarter. In from the center. It doesn't have to be dead on. So my other one I just eyeballed it. 16 and a quarter is right there, 16.3. Bring it down a little. 16.26, close enough. So all I gotta do is now mark that. And I'm gonna use a tip here just to score it. Okay, I got a nice score mark, and you probably can't see it on the camera. 
and now I want to bring it in a couple millimeter to the second hole. Let me loosen this up. And we're going to bring it in. Uh, I changed my zero. We'll bring it to 10. And you need to keep it away from the edge, otherwise, you'll hit the lip on the motor. There's a lip where that D stops, at least on my motors. Yours might be different. I'll link to where I got the motors. They're from Amazon. They were $15 each, approximately. So I'm going to make that 10 millimeters away from the edge. At 998, that's close enough. I'll do the same thing. I'll score the edge with a tip. If I had a really high quality caliper, I probably wouldn't. But this is only a $10 caliper. Okay, so now I have three score marks on here. Uh, one in the middle and two 10 millimeters from the edge. So now I'm going to spend a little bit of time, and I'm not going to record it, of me cutting the shaft that's going to replace this shaft and some quarter inch aluminum to go in these holes and then I'll JB weld those in place. Um, I'll let that dry. I did two coats with the other one. I put the first coat to make it stick and then I put a second coat and smoothed that off to fill it so it was nice and flush. So that's going to take me probably half an hour to cut all the aluminum's quick. The steel is a pain in the neck to cut um, but I want steel for the, for the shaft um, because I'm a glutton for punishment. So I'll bring you back in a little bit. Okay, so I have the uh, the support shaft that's going to go in the back of the 70 millimeter piece drilled and tapped and I figured I'd, before I get this all glued up I'd show you a couple things. One tool that really helps because you want this end to be square is end mills. Um, I use an 8 millimeter end mill to square up this uh, shaft and you can kind of see where it's shiny in the edges. So, and even doing my best job I am off a couple thousands from the center um, and that's as good as I can get it which is why I'm going to look for some machine shops that can make aluminum uh, spacers that'll work um, yeah, it should work but I think I can do I think it'd be better um, this is 35 millimeters long and that allows it to not bottom out when installed so when it's all the way in here on the back I only have about a millimeter or so on the back actually hitting the bearing in the back. So that way it's not bottoming out. I can make it up to about 37 millimeter and not bottom out, but 35 works. Um, if you want more support, you can make it 37 and it would work. Uh, this has already been drilled and tapped, so all I gotta do is put the little nubs, and that's exactly what I use, is little cutoffs that I use from longer M3 screws. Um, yeah, just screw them in my fingertips and because uh, there's no head on them so you can't use an allen wrench and get them to the right height and then once I have them to the right height which isn't really very far in at all I JB weld that in place once it's dry I come back with a cutoff wheel cut them off sand the disc flat and we're good to go so I'm going to do all that um, prep the wheel first coat of JB welds in and it's proud on the edges so I'll, I'll sand this off with a file and then fill them the rest of the way for the final coat. Probably better to do this in black, but uh, I don't really care. So I'm going to continue to work. Figure I'd show you before I get this stuff going.